Right, still with me? Okay, so let's recap. We've installed the Raspbian operating system. We've then, uh, that's onto the SD card. We then started up the, the Raspberry Pi. We logged in through SSH and we installed Asterisk. It was something of a sort of pre-built, pre-set uh, um, version of Asterisk. The thing is that when you install Asterisk through your source code, you get a lot more uh, choice in what modules you want to be installed and what you don't. And in this case, it's kind of thrown everything in. As you can see by the, uh, by the list of config files, it's not leaving anything out. So everything inside here uh, is included and it's probably not really necessary. In fact, what I'm going to do so that we can introduce these configurations and introduce what they do and introduce the different uh, things uh, as we go, I'm going to actually remove all the config files and only put in what we need in order to continue. So there's nothing wrong with the way this is set up. There's nothing sort of bad about it. But essentially what it is, is it's basically just everything there and we don't need everything. So let's be specific about what we delete though. So I want to keep asterisk conf, right? I want to keep uh, CDR conf, where CDR conf, CDR conf. I want to keep the CLI conf. And CLI conf is going to tell you what commands that you can issue on the CLI, your codec conf. I want to keep that one. Conf bridge. Uh, let's, yeah, okay, let's leave that for now. No, actually, you know what? We're going to introduce conferences later. Okay, we need the ext config and we need the extensions conf. Right, so that's quite important. Uh, extensions, I'll show you how all that works in a second. So then we need. Uh, yeah, first of all, follow me, Fungo. Do you see no HTTP? You know what? I'm going to. Put HTTP in there because I really just want to switch it off. Uh, yeah, you know what? As I said, we're going to be minimal, so let's take that off. Uh, X no indications no logger no manager. I think we should include man. No, we're going to introduce all this later. Uh, modules yes. Now modules we need to keep right. Modules is going to tell us what we want to load. Uh, music on holds kind of useful right now. Um, the PJ stuff, yeah, let's use SIP for now, we can go to PJ SIP later. So let's just get started and for that we'll introduce that later. Um, what else have we got here? We've got modules, was the last thing we did. Music on hold, uh, res, fax, oh, none of these are important right now. Um uh, .conf. Okay, so we're going to use SIP. We're going to play around with SIP. That is how we're going to have our extensions. Um, we're going to have faxes, red ODBC. We're going to have an ODBC connection. RTP is kind of useful. Control RTP. Say is not important right now. Uh, you know, SIP and SIP notify often go together, but uh, I'm going to, anyway. That there the UDP TL is kind of useful. Users conf kind of complains if you don't have that, so let's leave that there and then voicemail if we want to leave voicemail. We don't need XMPP. So that is what we are going to delete. So delete because I am going across the network will actually delete them. So that is them in the bin. Okay, what we left with is a selection of config files that we're going to use in order to run our asterisk pvx. That it is really very minimal stuff. In fact, if I open them, so let's refresh that one, refresh. If I open these, you'll notice that it really does explain a lot. So it's got a lot of 
chatting, okay, and ex explaining a lot of the options. Now, you can read through these options, they're useful, you can see they commented out with a little semicolon, okay, um, I would prefer to clean them out, but let's leave them for now and get things running. So, CDR, I am going to switch off, no CDRs for now, right, and in fact, all of this stuff can all go, I just need the words no, enabled no, so you can see there, CSV, all that kind of stuff, all gone. Okay, enabled no. Let's save that CLI. So you can just see a few uh, options. Doesn't even actually need CLI at the moment. Codex. Again, we're going to go through this later, but essentially it's got a lot of explanation. The only thing I really wanted to do was switch off the uh, CDR. Um, ext config, uh, config. So this is kind of uh, kind of important, uh, and for the moment you can see us explaining a lot of stuff in there. And um, the the funny thing about it is that even though it's quite an important file, you have to have it. It has to be there. The default of being off is actually what I want. So I'm going to take that explanation off. I'm just going to say settings, IX users, defaults, all these kind of stuff, sub regs, sub peers, all that is fine for the moment. All right, as it is commented out because the default is correct. These you can see that these are instructing it to use your IX users from an ODBC driver. As just we haven't even installed any of that. That's why it's uncomment, it's commented, and it doesn't doesn't need it. If this is commented out like this, say SIP peers, ODPC asterisk. Then what it actually does is it actually reads off the SIP conf file, right? So that's what this will do, it will override the default, which is SIP.conf. And in this case, we don't want it to, we want it to use the SIP. Conf. So extensions.conf is a major, major file for us, okay? And I'm going to clear that out. I'm just going to say static is yes, and I'm just going to say I no, and I'm going to take that. Mm. Going to take this one. Yep. Global bars. Take that. All of that. This is. This can be. Be a bit confusing. Let me see what else they got. Globals. So somebody's defined some globals. We don't really need what you have defined. Uh, ah, there's a whole DAO plan inside here. Okay, so somebody is in the default setup is to include a whole DAO plan, and we're not going to use that. Okay, we are going to start with something far more simple. So clear that all out, and we're going to leave that just like that. Control S, modules. Now, the modules is kind of important. You see, it says here auto load is yes. So basically, it is going to automatically load all the modules that are in the modules directory so let me move that down and I'm on my Raspberry Pi here so I'm gonna say um, in fact I can show you uh, this not the CDR conf we actually finished with CDR clients, so we finished with extensions card. Okay, modules is open and under asterisk conf, you can see that um, the modules directory mod. So var user lib asterisk modules, so copy that, go back here and go cd paste takes you here, and it's minus L. Now these are all the actual modules. Now Asterisk kind of works in a, a fairly sort of simple sort of way. Basically what it does is all of these compiled files, these SO files, are loaded in the beginning. All right. So what it's doing is it's really just loading a bunch of uh, binary files. Asterisk itself is really quite a small application and what it does is it loads all of these configuration files into it okay everything remember we deleted the res xmpp well essentially 
that was that would have this file when it would would have started will have read the XMPP file. Now, most of the time, it disables itself if it cannot read the config file or it uses defaults, which is sort of fine. So I'm going to say auto load is yes, and you can see that what some what the person who put this together did is they set it that these are the following modules of that see there of that that are disabled so it says no load no load no load no load now it's no loading a lot of these things and that's fine we can leave it to no load them if we want to fine hone this a bit more we could do that and as we go and progress along this channel we're going to do that so auto load is yes and that's it's kind of the important thing that we want to do it's probably going to error a lot to us to say that the config files are missing in fact it's going to be using uh, the defaults which is fine or it's going to disable itself if it doesn't read the config file so that's fine music on hold is another little file which is basically telling us where the music on hold files are so uh, I where's, where's default the yeah, default so I know that for example this one is the music on hold the default okay so mode is file directory is moh I like to specify the actual music on hold file so where uh, again asterisk config music on hold will take uh, from the var lib directory so moh will be based off that um, and if I go back in there the moh folder will be but off that directory so I'm going to just take all of these other things which uh, could be confusing I'll take that out as we go along we're going to improve on that RTP this is fine it's just spacing up fit is uh, specifying some ports now these ports are useful when you start to trunk in and out of your network now as it stands we're going to be using this PBX within our local LAN. So that's quite important now. Now, when you start work with RTP sessions, which is the actual calling data, the actual packets, they're going to start going through these ports. And these ports are quite important to make sure that you have opened on your router. Otherwise, you're going to have no audio on your calls. Uh, again, we're going to get to that later. So we can switch that off. Uh, we've got music on hold set and uh, we've got our modules no load and um, yeah that's just a config and close where were we rtp sip notify now the sip notify file really can be cleared we're not going to really worry about it so sip.conf is an enormous file it contains a lot of the settings that we want to do okay it's got a lot of explanations and stuff like that so under general you know what in fact I'm just going to clear it out completely and I'm going to save that and I'm going to add what we need later UTP tell this is going to be some stuff for um, transport of T38 okay so we're not really going to be worrying about um, faxing at the moment in fact that file we can yeah, yeah we can delete that one we don't need that so delete that Move to trash. Yeah. Okay. Delete permanently. Yes. Okay. Users. So now the users file kind of useful if you are again going to be working in a sort of like a high volume or a high use environment. Okay. Now they are templates for users, basically, basically templates. And when you, uh, you know, we're not going to be using it. So we're going to delete it, move to trash and permanently delete, delete. They, they, they're kind of useful in a sort of a more higher volume environment where the users can be set up in a template and it can take that, those settings from there. Right, then finally voicemail. So these two files we are going to use quite a bit. Right, now that we've made a whole lot of changes, I want to go back here and I want to restart the service. So, Service asterisk will be 
uh, one of the you, I'm hitting up on my keyboard basically I am uh, just going through a history of what the previous commands are and it's really useful because we typed out service access status and re uh, status in this case but, um, previously so by just hitting up on your keyboard it gets back to the history so I'm going to say stop all right it's going to stop the Astra service and then I'm going to say start I could have also hit restart but let's just call it like that takes a sec and then I can go uh, 68 uh, status all right so it's running again um, and as I said it's going to be throwing you a couple of errors because it's not able to load a lot of the modules right and there you go asterisk ready it doesn't matter that it's throwing up these errors we don't really need to uh, we don't really need to solve those now but we're going to solve those as this channel progresses and we're going to have everything nice and clean so I've now reverted back to my non super user because we have finished installing okay I'm going to use my sudo asterisk minus r to get into asterisk okay and from here I can now type tab to get all the commands that I want right so here I can type in sip show and, and I am using my tab a lot, show peers. So I don't have any peers right now. What are peers? Peers are essentially my other users on this network. I have extensions uh, as peers essentially, but so it doesn't really distinguish anybody differently from a, a user to a service provider. They are all essentially peers, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a user onto our system now if you if you um, look back here on the command line uh, if if you you'll see there's a couple if sip show users okay users okay you'll see that it's kind of similar it's also saying username secret account code all that kind of stuff and then here's Years. Um, you can see username, name, host, all that kind of stuff. So users and peers kind of work the same, and we'll go over you know, how that all works and what the differences the difference is. I just want to get us to a point where we can register an extension, make a test call in, and you can see how the system works from there. Okay. Okay, so in order to start using the SIP configuration, we need to give it some general settings, right? These are sort of like basic overall settings, and we're going to improve on this as we go along. But essentially what we want to do is we, I have them all ready, so I'm just going to paste them down in the, in, the, in the section. You can see it's under general. And one of the things that we want to really do is we want to, because we're going to be using UDP as our primary protocol, we will say UDP bind addresses to any address on this network, 0, 0, 1, 0 to 0 to 0, and the port is port 5060. Now, there's some other things like context and... Um, and and some other settings just get these done exactly as they are um, and uh, and then we will um, uh, go through those as we go um, so just take them down as they are on your screen all right they're not actually that sort of important right now it's just some of the things are better turned off, like SRV lookup, music on hold suggest is default, which is the same as what's in that music on hold file. Uh, allow guest is no, uh, always reject is yes. These are all things like authentication, things like that, which we're going to work with. Allow subscribe, so these are people that, um, th this is a command to allow you to subscribe your extension to know if somebody is on a call or not notify that person if you go onto a hold or if you ring and then the call counter is yes which is required for you to be able to uh, use all of these tools all right so i'm going to leave that like that okay and now the section underneath is where you would define your users 
Right, so this is user 1 and user 2. Now, it doesn't really matter what the names of these users are, because these are essentially the people within your network. Now, there are countless articles on the internet about what you should define these people are. Should they be users? Should they be devices? Should they be MAC addresses? Etc. It doesn't really matter right now. Now, this is sort of, you know, ground level stuff. We're just working on getting the telephone to be able to call each other. Now, the, 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 th the reason why we have them in a bracket like that is because they will define, they will become objects, right, within asterisk. Okay, and they will be dialable users. And they will contain the credentials of that user. So if it's user, user 1, uh, you would have username and a password, and you would type that into the device, the phone, the uh, extension, whatever. So if I've got a phone on my desk, the username and password will be from this. Okay, so if I consider that to be, for example, a MAC address, well, it would be very difficult for me to say um, what is the MAC address of my software phone on my PC. Well, so it doesn't really work to exclusively use MAC addresses. It, it works if you are exclusively using hardware phones, but we're increasingly not. So what you want to define as the user, user 1 and user 2, is just a, just a handle, really. It's just a, a thing that says, like, this is going to be Bob's phone, for example. Okay. Now, it could be his desk phone, it could be his landline, it could be his uh, mobile phone, whatever. So, this is possibly where you want to have sort of some sort of clear definition. So, you could say user one desk phone, user one mobile phone, all that kind of stuff. But for the moment, because user one is simply straightforward, user one, we're just going to leave it like that. All right. So, we're going to have user one and user two. Right, so at this point, we want to now give user 1 and user 2 uh, some details. Now, I have them ready again, so I'm just going to drop them in. Okay, I'm going to go through some of them. And I'm going to use the same settings for user 1 and user 2, right? So, just to sort of uh, make this clear, uh, user 1 would essentially be user1 at, so let me make a comment so that you guys can, so I can leave that, user1 at, uh, at this computer. Now, something more reliable than uh, the sort of raspberry pi.local is to use the actual IP address. Um, it, it's sort of the kind of thing where, yes, .local will work in a lot of contexts, and it's useful here in this Mac, but what happens if the device that you are referring to does not support it? And we may or may not be able to use that. So I'm going to say 192.168.88.85. Remember, 85 is our IP address of this computer. Uh, we can test that if you like. Uh, we just say uh, exit. Here and we can say if config, and you can see over here under e0 192.168.88.85. Okay, so let's go back into asterisk and over here. That is essentially how we're that's our handle for this guy, and the same for user 2. Right, so that's over there. He, of course, will be user 2. So user 1 is user at this guy and to be more specific it's on oops on port 5060 so essentially i don't know how you could say like globally within your network the handle for this guy is that it's essentially his sort of sip username 
user one and user two. So let's go and enter that, well, certainly this one, into a, a SIP program, a telephone. All right, now that we have our SIP details in here, we have type, friend, context, secret, host is dynamic, the DTMF mode, and allow and disallow. Um, let's go through those pretty quickly. So type friend, now this is sort of like a bit of a pain point with asterisk, but it's got this type definition of friend, user, and peer. Now, when you say user, uh, it really means that you're going to be making calls. When you say peer, it means that you're going to be receiving calls. And when you say friend, it means that you could be making or receiving calls. It's kind of that simple, but it can trip a lot of people up. But basically, uh, when you refer to a SIP device like a desk phone, um, you really are fine just calling it type friend. Um, so that's fine. The context is going to be the context that in our dial plan gets executed as soon as we make a call from this device. Uh, again, this setting you will see in just a second what the impact of that is. So don't worry about it now. The context for now from SIP is something that we've made up. It can be from my uh, from my phones. Obviously, just something without a space. So let's yeah from my phones. But this context will refer to a context in my extensions.conf. Right, right now, we're making it up. So whatever it is, it just should be consistent for each of these phones because they're both in the same, uh, essentially within the same context as, as the word says. It's, it's one user, the other user. If, if you wanted to think of your PBX as having different departments or sections or whatever it is, sure, those might be the different uh, sections, but in this particular example, the context of the call will simply be that when I make a call, go to this point in the dial plan. And that's what this line is right here. The secret is, of course, the password for this account, user one. The host dynamic, as, is, as, as I said earlier on, these devices will be somewhere on your network, on your mobile phone, on your desk, somewhere. It needs to know where you are, what IP address it is. So what's going to happen is it's going to say host is dynamic until you essentially tell it what your IP address is. DTMF mode is just a standard, so don't worry about that, and that RFC standard is fine. Disallow is referring to your codec choices. So disallow all means that I'm only going to... Uh, disallow all means that I basically am just going to disallow all codecs, and I'm going to enable the ULAW. Now the order of this is quite important. If I put allow ULAW, and then disallow all, essentially it's going to even disallow ULAW. So I must disallow all, gives me essentially a blank slate at that point. Okay, then it says allow ULAW. So in other words, if you want to allow another one, uh, like I know there's one called ALAW, you can just go ALAW, allow ALAW. There's also all sorts of different formats for how you can uh, do that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. For the moment, we just know that if we allow ULAW, uh, disallow all, we can allow ULAW, we can allow ALAW. Right, now that I have saved that, those are my two users on my PBX. Now that I've saved that, I need to go back into asterisk and I need to, to I need to register them. So at the moment, if I go uh, sip show peers, I don't have anybody, right? So I need to reload those users, reload those sip sip.conf into asterisk. Now, every time you make a change inside your sip.conf, we need to go and reload it. So I'm going to say sip reload. Now again, I use tab a lot, so I know that I'm typing the right thing. Sip reload now has loaded this into its memory. Now I can make changes to this file now, and if I want to commit those changes, I essentially have to, uh, I essentially have to sip reload them again. Now that I've sip reloaded, I'm going to show you something 
sup show peers. Now I have two users on my account. Remember before I had no users, no sup peers as they say. So I've got user one and user two. You see it says here host unspecified. So now really remember what we said earlier on, we said host is dynamic. So it says, well, you actually haven't specified the host yet. So I don't know where you are. All right, so you might be a user on my system now, but I don't know where you are. So this is where we start to put this details into Zoipa. So let me open up Zoipa and show you how to do that. So this is Zoipa. It is uh, the paid for version. Doesn't really matter. You can get your free version. Should work much the same in this place, in this context. But um, I'm going to click on the little cog here, go to accounts and add myself an account. Now what they're using, uh, they're looking for here is a Zoiper account, but in this case we don't have a Zoiper account. We're going to put in the username of the actual sub details. And here is the details. User1 is user1 at 192.168.0. Dot 85. Now, I, as I said, I'm using the IP address. It's a little bit more reliable. So, 5060 port. Password. What was the password? Remember? 1234. So, there you go. So, while I'm loading that, just a note on passwords. Uh, in this context, as the Raspberry Pi is sitting within our network, these passwords are fine. But if you ever, ever host Asterisk within a cloud environment or in a public server, reachable server, these passwords like 1234 are simply not enough. It really is going to give you a headache if somebody tries to get into your system and people will try. As much as I can, I would suggest to you that you never ever expose your Asterisk PBX to the internet. And I will go through in a very specific video on how to do that, how to link your SIP account, how to link your PBX up to a service provider. And in this case, we're not going to do that yet, so we don't need to open it up to the internet, and we certainly don't have to worry about difficult passwords for the moment. So, clicking next, I don't need to worry about a proxy or anything like that. Here we can see it found, the SIP UDP found. Uh, you don't have to worry about IAX sort of doing a look, but don't worry about that. It found it over there. Sub UDP success, and there's our user one. Right. So let's go back to our main interface and choose user one. So there it is. It's got a tick next to it saying that it is connected. Is it connected? Well, let's have a look. So you'll see that it said, "Ah, oh, hold on. There's something on the screen. Received a subscribe without a mailbox." That's right. Remember, we uh, didn't set up any of the mailboxes. So over here, I'm going to say sub show peers again. Ha! That's new. User one, user one, one nine two one six eight 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 dot eight six. Oh, that must be me. Right. That must be Zoiper. All right. So where is Zoiper? Over there. Now, well. Let's try and do something. Let's phone. Let's phone something. I mean, we've got my phone registered. So I'm going to phone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Why not? <laughs> phone it. Oh, dear. What happened? Call ended. Oh, dear. What is going on? Why isn't it working? Right. Now let's read what it's saying. It says here, at this date and time, the requested invite from user one, well, that's me, yes, that is where I'm coming from, to extension 1235678, -5 rejected because the extension's not found in the con. Oh, hold on, context. I know context, right? Context, context from my phone. Yes, exactly. It's saying that there is no context from my phone. What are you talking about? So go and make one. So I'm going to copy that, right? And I'm going to go to my extensions.conf 
and I have to put it in a square bracket. These are contexts. Okay, that's what this is. So I'm going to define a context and I'm going to save it, right? And that's all it was looking for, a context. Is that enough? Let's go and have a look. Now, when I refer to extensions.conf, I'm really referring to the dial plan. So I can say dial plan reload. Okay, set dial plan reloaded. Great. It said dial plan reloaded. It needed a context. Now I should be able to call. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Go. Oh, it's still not working. Uh, what is going on now? Well, again, it's having more problems with what I've said. It says rejected because extension number uh, not uh, extension not found in context. Okay, so it's not found an extension in the context. Ah, okay. Now we need to learn about how dial, dial plan works. Okay, so it has the dial plan, it has from my phones, but what it needs now is more instructions. So now we're going to go through some of the dial plan instructions. Now the dial plan is a sort of funny little guy, but basically it all works in the same sort of way. So we write this ext, extn, extend, all right, we use this equal sign and a right arrow thing. And essentially we give it three parameters. The first parameter is there. Can you see that there is a uh, comma over there? Then a number, right? In this case, number one. Everything must be started as number one. And then we give it an action. So there are the three parameters a number, uh, at least a pattern, a number, and an action. Essentially, this is breaking down into three different things. It's saying, at this, matching this expression, using this order, execute this command. Now, you'll see it says here, same. Now, what same means is it's saying, everything else is the same in terms of the expression. And then I'm going to use n to refer to the next instruction, do this. So by reading this out to you in English, I can say on entering this context, match any number using this line first. No op hello. Okay, so I'm going to get back to what that is. No op hello. Then within the same context, on this next number, hang up. So, plain English, no op hello, then hang up, right? And this E1 hang up is referring to something else. It is saying, well, if there is not an expression over there, in other words, if it's not a match to that, in fact, it's saying E for any error, on any error, on the first line of every any error, hang up. So that's really just saying, if you ever have a problem, hang up, which is a pretty safe thing to do, right? So what we're starting here is in this context of from my phones, can you see the context is basically that point to that point, right? This whole thing over here. In this context, no op hello, hang up. If you have a problem, hang up. And that is it in English. So I'm going to save that. Now, what did no op do? What is no op? And what is this uh, What is this expression? So let's have a look. We've got an underscore in the beginning. That's not a typo. So what it means is the following characters are going to be an expression. That's what it means. So the underscore means anything after this, anything after this is going to be an expression literally a regular expression now if you're a developer and you've come across regular expressions before well there you go it is an actual expression it's saying within this group of characters the plus the star the zero to nine match anything start
starting with that. Then this full stop at the end means that there can be a trailing, no sorry, it means that there is going to be a trailing number. The can be is an exclamation mark. The dot means that there will be another character after this. Alright, so if I took out the dot, it would mean that I would have only typed one letter, right? And it must match those. Okay, so there is one other thing you can do, and you can say underscore dot, which will just match absolutely anything, right? But in my case, I'm going to leave it as that. Right with the dot. This will basically mean any dialable number on a person's telephone number keypad is going to match. I can do plus on a keypad, I can do star, and I can do the numbers 0 to 9. And that is basically catching anything in there, followed by something again, something else. Right? So probably if I typed in the number 1, then this dot here will be referring to the number two and so on right it doesn't have an end to that right the dot means that there are more characters coming okay so at this point we're going to leave this regular expression so to speak indicated by this underscore and we're going to go on to what no op means now essentially it's just a little helping uh, application it just means no operation, no nothing, do nothing. But what it does do is it writes out something to the screen and it will write out the words hello. Now the thing to remember about the dial plan is that there isn't such a thing as quotation marks. Everything is expressed. All right. So in other words, hello actually write, writes out the letters H-E-L-L-O. Right. If I type in quotation mark hello, it will type out quotation mark hello. Alright, it is uh, already evaluated whatever is inside here. There are variables, there are um, specific keywords and things like that. And they're usually defined with a curly bracket. We'll get into those in a second. We don't need a terminating line, right? Nothing at the end. We just go on to a new line, which the new line in this case, under the same context, is going to be to hang up. So, you probably guessed what this is going to do is going to write the word hello on the screen and hang up if I dial any single number. So let's give it a whirl. Ah, first of all, we need to reload our dial plan. <laughs> it's something that you can do quite a lot and trips you up. You do some changes in your dial plan, you forget to reload, but essentially dial plan reload every time you want to make a change. All right, we're going to leave it on the CLI so that you can see what it's doing. I've got this over here and again I'm going to type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Enter. Hmm. Nothing happened. The reason why nothing happened is, well, it sort of did happen. It hung up, right? So the thing to realize is that uh, when Asterisk writes out things, you see it didn't give an error now. So something happened, was different, but it's not actually showing me what's happened. So there is different various, different levels of verbosity inside Asterisk. So we're going to go core, set, verbose, and I'm going to put it on something like 7. All right. So you can see that it says console verbose was off and now 7. Right. If I want to switch it off again, I'm going to put 0, and if I'm going to put 7. I can put it on 1 or 2 or whatever it is, but what happens is that under various different levels of verbosity, there are different things that show. But from about 7 onwards, it's really quite enough to see what's going on. So, verbosity 7 is what we're going to be doing it on. Now let's have another look and see what happened there, because nothing errored out, and our phone call did end right didn't give us a decline it just ended so i'm going to go one two three four five six seven eight nine again and i'm going to go oh Ooh. that is cool hello there it is so it said executing the number we dialed at from my phone's number one Remember what we said in the dial plan? 
okay? This is the context. This is the regular expression, the, uh, the expression. This is the number, and this is the action. So this is what it's producing you. This is the number, the expression, at context, code line number one, action no op. Hello, new stack. All right, so there you go. That is our first test call. Didn't actually phone anybody, didn't actually do anything. So we are going to get it to actually answer the call in a second. Right, so let's get on with that. Right, so if you want to do something a little bit more interesting, let's let's get um, let's get Astros to answer the phone and do something a little bit more interesting. I think the best next example would be to get Asterisk to play us some music on hold. So answer the phone and play some music on hold. In order to do that, we're going to go into uh, our from my phone's context, okay? And we're going to edit some of the stuff over here. So now I can I can leave this hello line over here, and I've got the same hang up. But so we don't really want to hang up the call. In this case, we actually want to answer the call. So at this line, I'm going to type answer. Now you're probably thinking, well, this is a lot of things to remember. So how do I get a list of these things over here? These commands over here, these functions, commands, things that it does. So Astros has got a published list and you can go and get a lot of this information. So let me open up, what did we have here? We had the router page, so let's close that. We've got asterisk, dial plan function, no dial plan commands. Okay, dial plan commands, and there's pretty good res uh, pretty good um, resource resource of information at VoIP info. So here we can see. Let's uh, look for something, some basic calling stuff. Eh? We want a general command. Uh, you can read up about what each one does. We're going to go through a lot of these in the tutorials. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel because uh, I'm going to do this quite often. Um, so, interesting. Let me just search for this answer. A N S W R. Call management. Answer hang up, etc. Okay, answer. Answers the channel if it's ringing, right? So that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to answer the call. We can say busy. We can say channels available. All that kind of stuff. So this is one thing. And then what is the other one? Uh, music on hold. So music on hold is well, music on hold. So there you go. Plays music on hold indefinitely. So let's go and use those two commands. So we're going to say answer. Then we're going to just copy and paste it over there. But the truth is, let me add it again. I'm going to say uh, music on hold, but I'm also going to give it another command in between there. The reason is because I don't always like to make the computer do things immediately after the other. So what that means is that you know, our voice is a bit of a funny thing and computers and all these kind of things there is a sort of a level of timing amongst this right so what that means is that um, the the sort of latency of which the actions get uh, handled can have a certain amount of time so with the way that uh, the way that asterisk and your phones work is with the sub protocol now it's sending text messages to and from each other so when asterisk comes in when your when your when your phone phones in and when when this bit of code executes this answer command is actually sending a sub packet back to your phone saying answer the call right and then 
If, for example, I went answer and played music on hold, there is not enough time for the computer to re read that response and return its OK command to that and then have the next thing come on. So, in other words, when I, if I said answer and play music on hold right after the other, I would miss a little bit of the music on hold. And that's not like a huge problem, but by adding these weights in between, all right, see that weight in between? It essentially is just saying, just ease up a little bit. Yes, answer the phone. Wait a second. Play music on hold. And that's it. Essentially, this will play music on hold until you hang up. So that's essentially what we're leaving it as. And I'm going to save that. Now, what do we need to do? Remember, dial plan reload. So dial plan reload is reloading the dial plan, right? Let's go back up to Zoipa. Where's Zoipa? Zoipa is there. Okay, so now I'm going to dial 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I don't have to type this whole number all the time. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 is fine. Uh, now I still have my verbosity on. <laughs> music on hold. It's, it's the default music on hold. Ah, but we don't have Let's hang up. We don't have our CLI ready, so let's go. Yeah, verbosity seven. Do that again. I might have exited earlier while I was recording, so let's go one, two, three, four. There you go. So it said hello. Answer. Wait. Music on hold. Do you actually? Let's just listen for that because that's quite interesting. I'm going to hang up the call. Right, I'm going to start the call again. One, two, three, four. Now, see if you can notice that one second. See, it's really quite smooth. It says accepted and started playing really in a sort of smooth and continuous motion. So we will use weight quite a bit just to kind of ease the stuff in. But essentially, there is our dial plan happening. All right, and that is our music on hold. So you could extend that to do all sorts of different things, but that is the example so far. So we have a call going into Asterisk and it has been answered and played music on hold. All right, so. <clears throat> Uh, we've covered quite a lot in this video, but I just wanted to do the last thing, which would be to uh, phone each other. So essentially, being a PBX, that's what you know what it, what it can do. You can phone one person, uh, calls could come in, and you could phone and transfer and all that kind of stuff. And we did add two users, so let's do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. So this wouldn't really be applicable in this case. So I'm going to leave this over here and I'm going to say uh, play music on hold. You'll notice that I don't use spaces or anything here. I'm using dashes. It's the right way to do it. Now both of these phones are subscribed to this context, right? Remember from my phones, from my phones. So in other words, when both of these phones make calls, when they initiate a dial that will land up here right in other words for uh, user one to be able to phone user two right we're going to catch that essentially inside here now as i said user one is kind of like a credentials but it's not really a telephone number um, we all know our cell phone telephone telephone number. I mean, if you give out your telephone number to a mate, you won't say, hey, I'm user one at, right? You might be that on your PBX, but essentially you're going to be known by your telephone number, by, say, an extension number. Now, those extension numbers is what we define over here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to use no up again. And I'm going to use a special keyword called extend. What that will do is it will highlight 
what you are who you are calling right so I'm gonna say you can dial any number right okay and I will highlight that but then I'm going to say so that's number one I'm going to say if you are in fact dialing now I'm taking everything away 100 so now 100 is Bob right but we can change it at any time right so I'm just going to say here uh, telephone number is 100 and I'm going to say here telephone number is 200 right it's not really anything that we define in the SIP details right because that's really kind of just credentials just for our in information I'm going to say 100 and 200 okay so what we're going to say is we're going to say actually let's move this underneath we're going to say if somebody dials 100 exactly the number 100 and on the first line of this execution no op uh, someone is call, calling 100 right because that's what's going to happen right now it doesn't matter sorry that's a that's a typo there's too too many uh, brackets there someone doesn't matter who you are because both of these extensions are subscribed to the same context from phones from my phones but if I dial 100 right then I will say someone is dialing 100 if I sorry that's 200 if I dial 200 someone is dialing 200 right so I'm going to give it some space underneath because I'm going to do other things but essentially what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it the next line of code to do in the next line of code, I need to give it the number two. Oops. Two. So that is number two. So the first instruction is no op. Number two will be answer, wait, and this usual gump. So the answer, wait. Okay. Answer, wait, and then what are we going to do? We're going to dial. Right, so we're going to say dial, and who are we dialing? Well, the dial command, which is over here, uh, no, which is over here, it's a bit better. Uh, we said play music on hold. Uh, dial and uh, it's quite probably quite a lot on dial dial takes a number of parameters type identifier timeout options URL okay so we're going to essentially let's take that across uh, we don't need your uh, okay let's take a whole lot across so take that and we're going to put it into with, uh, let's just do your code. We're going to say dial, right? Say type or identifier. So type, not or, it's type slash. It's sip, which is the uh, the type identifier. Now, who was one hundred? Remember who one hundred was? One hundred was user one. Okay, uh, timeout. 30 second timeout. I don't like putting the spaces over there. Options, I'm not going to have any options. And URL, I'm not going to have any URL. So I'm just going to use it like that. All right, so now we can copy that whole lot. And we can say, okay, and this of course is two. Okay, so we're saying, 
that when anybody calls from their phones, it lands into this context. It then evaluates the number you dialed. Remember the evaluation for this was basically anything. But because these are more specific than that, these will execute first. Right? You understand that? Remember this one would catch anything and then use basically same, n, and whatever. All right, we could actually change the context over here. We could say extend. We could say same um, as as this one, but I'm going to leave it where it's specifically where it's specified. Uh, let's do that. Just to play some music on hold. If somebody dials a number that's not 100 or 200. Okay, so let's just test this. Okay, and we're going to use a sort of a false positive, so to speak. We're going to use a use a, a fail, really. So we're going to say when user 100, that's this guy over here, and my SIP extension, so my Zoiper extension, if I dial 200, right, it will execute this command over here, 200. It will say, oh, I've got a problem there, that will be 4. Four. Okay, uh, you can see why the N is a little bit easier. So actually, let's just go N, 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 because then we don't have to keep track of those numbers all the time. So N, N, N. But you notice that I leave this one here, right? Can you see that? Because it's saying when the number one is executed, the first thing I do is that, the next thing I do is that, next thing I do is that, and the next thing I do is that. I have no further instructions. And when I use 200, its first thing to do is that. You always have to give it a 1. Then the next, and the next, and the next. All right? So again, we're leaving it like that. Then the same with this. N, a 1, N, N, N. Uh, was it easier to use these? You can see we can mix them. So I'm going to use both. Right? But when I dial 200, right? 200, 1, first thing says someone is calling 200. Then I'm going to answer it. Then I'm going to wait for one second. Remember, that was nice and smooth. Then I'm going to dial this guy. All right. And there's another cute little thing you can do is you can say R, which basically simulates a ringing sound. OK, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. So um, there it is. That's our dial plan. Shall we go and reload that dial plan reload? Right, our dial plan is now loaded and there was no errors. So now if I execute that, it should try and call 200. Okay, so it's probably not doing anything, right? It's probably going to fail. So let's go and have a look and see what happened. It said someone is calling 200. Correct answer. Okay, it did. Wait one second. Then SIP 100 user tiled SIP user 2 and it says unable to create channel SIP. Okay, and it says the channel was unavailable. So, what that really did is it just said that uh, I couldn't reach the person. Okay, so really what we want to do now is we want to put uh, user 2. Uh, into the mix so that we can call that person right so in other words I want to register user 2 so if I go here and I go what was it sip so sip show peers user 2 is not registered right now so I'm going to register it on my mobile phone as an example so I have Zoiper that. So, I have Zoiper on my phone and I'm going to now go and create an account. Uh, so, unregister and delete that old account. So, I tap the plus button at the top. I don't really have a screen recorder, so I'm not going to really worry about that. I'm going to tap the plus button. Do you have an existing account? Yes. Manual configurations. I want to use a SIP account. Account name, I'm just going to say test user. Okay, 
So over there, test user, I don't know if this is going to really work. Okay, don't worry about it. Uh, domain, now the domain is not uh, important for now. So I'm going to leave that out. Username was user2. Password was 1234. Caller ID, not important. Domain, no. Auth username, user2. Proxy, outbound, don't need that. So under the domain, I'm actually going to type the IP address 192.168.88.85. Caller ID. Uh, let's say user two. Okay, let's see. Is that enough? Register. Registering. Might have got something wrong here. Status okay. Right, here we go, my screen is showing that. So now, subtro peers, there you go. So another interesting command that you can do instead of peer, you can peers, you can say user2, right, and you will see it's Zoiper is registered. That's user agent. So I'm going to Go back to my accounts. All right, I'm now in my dial screen. So let me go back to here. Ah, use this one. Oh no, that's terrible. Okay, right. So there's the Zoper ready test user. Okay, and with that. I am going to phone user 100. Just to let you know, just to show you, there you go. Incoming call, I'm going to accept the call. Okay, it's a bit echoey now, but essentially, there you go. The audio is going round in a circle because I'm standing right here. But now I am in a call. User 2 is calling me. User 1, user 2. That's it. We now have a call through our PBX. Okay, so we've talked about quite a lot now. And you can go ahead and practice what it is that we have done. Um, I know this is probably quite a long video. Um, but we were able to uh, set up Raspbian onto our Raspberry Pi. We were able to install Asterisk and it came with a whole heap of config files. We stripped that all out. We just put in the files that were necessary for us to demonstrate what we wanted to do and to get you familiar with the dial plan. As you saw, we did a lot of work with the zip.conf and the extensions.conf as well. So those are the two things, your dial plan and your extensions. We're going to play with that. So subscribe to the channel. Please post comments and all that kind of stuff. This is a regular channel. I'm going to be um, uh, trying to establish a, a sort of a, a sort of a, a community here. I want to respond to your messages, your requests, your, your thoughts, your ideas. If you like it, like it. If you don't like it, dislike it and let me know what it is that I can do to improve it. I will be posting these videos as much as I can. Um, you know, uh, more and more often, I'll also uh, give you some sort of an idea on what we're going to be doing next and down the line. So now that we have set up our PBX, we're going to start working with some more of the dial plan functionality. Okay, that's in the next video. We're going to do some more advanced things, some more uh, command line things. And we're going to introduce some more functionality. Down the line, we're going to do all sorts of things. We're going to do uh, voicemail. We're going to use some, remember I said earlier on, we're going to use some of the AWS tools. And that is to, um, 
to do some of the, the, the sort of the functionality of it. Remembering this is all from the context of the Raspberry Pi. This is for an in-office, in-home PBX. Because what we're also going to do is we're going to tie in Asterisk with some of the GPIO options and we're going to get it to for example control home automation and stuff like that how cool would it be to dare to tell your friends that you phoned your house and you put your lights on <laughs> anyway that is something of a goal it, uh, as i said subscribe comment do whatever you need get hold of me let's take this further i know this is obviously just early days but i really would like your feedback so thank you very much and goodbye.